Welcome back to Coding with V. And today, we're going to continue with Go module and workspaces. Specifically, we're going to look at what a Go workspace is and how you can use it and why you might want it. Before we get into the video, if you are not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when I post videos. And with that said, let's jump into the video. So I'll start off by showing you a problem and then I'll show you how we solve it with Go Workspaces. So let's say, so here I am in um, my directory with all the episodes and what I'll do is I'll copy episode five to seven. The reason I'm copying five is because in six, we have a lot of things to tag it and so on and I don't want that. So let's just copy episode five um, example code. And then of course I'll go to seven and yep, there we go. And then I start my editor. And so, so far, nothing really interesting. We just made a copy of what we had. And just to remind you of the code we had, well, it's basically was to do um, this, um, nothing um, fancy. Okay, still have that. Okay, and so of course we can say a tree here and we can see what that looks like. So what if I wanted to have multiple modules in this directory? Now remember, a module is created when you add a Go that mod file to a directory. So now for me to have multiple modules in this directory that I'm currently in, I'll need to create multiple directories. And within each of those directories, I need a go that mod file. So let's do that. So since I have um, this go that mod file here and the module name is Sting, why don't we create a directory called Sting? So let's clean up here and go back to our editor. And within our editor, I'll create, I could have created a directory from the command line, but I'll do it from the editor in case. There are folks who are not on a Linux-like operating system and might not have the same like directory command. I don't know what Windows uses anymore. So I made I made a directory called thing and I moved my all the files into there. And so we can once again verify um on like tree three. Um and so now we can see tree um shows that oh, there's a directory thing in the current directory that that means current directory and everything is moved into there. So great. Now, of course, if I try to do go run, this is not going to work because there's no module file in this directory. Of course, if I went into the thing directory, this command would work. But remember, what we want to be able to do is be in this directory we're in, episode seven directory, and be able to use multiple modules and have much and use our modules from here. So let's just create another module in this directory. I'll create a module. And so I can go here, right click, and I can send new folder. And let's just call this module Baz. Okay. And once again, if I do tree here, you can see there's Baz. There's nothing in it. Let me clean up. And, but now in Baz, I want to create a module and a go file. So of course we know what will happen within Baz. We'll have a module file. And once again, we can do tree and we can do turn the tree command and see um, what it looks like. Now, that's because I'm in the modules directory for Baz, so that makes sense. Um, let's now create a main.go. And so I'm going to pretend that in this module Baz, I have a bunch of services and a particular service, and that service has, let's say, multiple commands, but I only keep a one command for now. So I'm going to say, let's call it service one. And there's a command in this service, and we call it main.go. Let's go with something like that. I'm just going to write some simple code. Okay. And of course, that's going to work. We don't have to worry about it. I'm going to add another file just for kicks and giggles. And I'm going to add that again within Baz. I'm going to say we have some utils maybe. And we have goo and goo that go and package goo. And there we go. And let me just call this from, um, call my do something cool, goo that do something cool, goo that do something cool, I'll call it from here. I'm just writing some silly stuff, basically to um, just show you that we can create whatever complexity we need within each um, module. So, okay, so that's what we have going. So that looks like a, quite a bit from within the editor. So let me just go back here, go up one directory. Well, before I go back up, let's clean up and let's make sure that we can run our code. So I say go run, we have SEM awesome Baz, and then um, services, and then service one that CMD, and it works. Okay, that's fine. 
Now, the problem comes when I go back up one directory. As we saw before, I cannot run this command or even the go run sc that may slash referral slash awesome slash thing command from here. And so this is where a workspace would help. So let's go to the documentation. So what is a workspace? If we scroll down to workspaces, you see a workspace is a collection of modules on disk. This is very, very, very important. It's a collection of modules on disk, and that's exactly what we have here. We have two modules on disk that are used as the main module when running minimum version selection. Why do you use as the main module? Because when I want to run my code, I want to say, I want to be able to say which one of these modules I should use. Now, because these two modules are very different, I can, you can see, I can say that I want to sort of use both of those. But imagine that thing here is a clone of some other module that I found online. Or maybe I want to make another version. I could have multiple of these on my computer while I work on it. And then I can point to each one to say which one I want to use. And you'll see that in a minute. Let's keep reading. A workspace can be declared in a go.work file. Notice how this is similar to a go.mod file to create a module. Use a go.work file to create a module. And that file specifies relative path, relative again. It's relative from where the go.work file is that you will specify the path to the module directory of each of the module in the workspace. When no go that file exists, the workspace consists of the single module containing the current directory. So essentially, you always have a workspace. And if you don't have a go that work file, well, the module contains that single module in that, that current directory. But once you have multiple modules on disk, remember, they must be in their own directory. So most commands that work with module and so on operate um, with workspaces. So it goes on to say your other command currently de determines where the workspace is. It's sort of traverse upward from anywhere you are, blah, blah, blah. You can read all of that stuff. But basically, what a go that work file looks like is something like this. It almost looks like a go that much file. It starts off with the directive go and, you know, sets out the go version. There's a use directive. Um, in go that much file, we had require directive. Um, there's also replace directive, like a module file, but also you can actually use that relative path to replace one thing with another. So you can certainly read this. This is the format of what um, the Go that file looks like, and it talks about the Go directive. And then here is there's a tool chain directive, which don't worry about that. You don't you really don't need that. Debug directive, you don't need that. Um, if you need to do that sort of thing, you'll go learn. But here's an example: is you know, you can say use that, and again, it's always local. That's what you see. Um, dot forward or dot dot meaning up one. So the direct the module couldn't be outside the workspace that you're working in, because again, it's relative. So let's just say that that means parent go up. And of course, here's an example of replace, and it can replace for a platform specific relative path, if it's a file path um, that you're replacing with, or you can replace with a module path, okay? All right, so let's show you some example of all um, things that are in a repository, a module path could be replaced by something that you're working on locally, that maybe you forked that net package, for example, to have a different version. Um, all right, so we could keep going through. Now, besides this documentation here, and this, what I'm looking at is the go at module um, reference guide, okay? So that also talks about workspaces, but there's a tutorial um, on the Go website, which I'm putting in the description below, which also walk you through how to use modules. So if something you see here is not clear and you want a refresher or something, go check that out. So, all right, let's get back to our code here. So once again, the idea is that you create a go.mod file. So the way you create a go.mod file is actually a go work command. And so you can use that, go work command, and you can use that to initialize a workspace by creating a go work file. You can also, so you can say go work in it, and let's clean up this tree. And now you can see I have a Go work file here. If I go back to my editor, you can see, let's close this up. Baz thing. I'm just going to close up these files for now. You don't need those. And if I look at the Go work file, just have the Go version. That's it. Nothing else. So with that, I still cannot run my command like this because, you know, it doesn't know what this module is where it is located. Remember, um, 
it is working with files that are currently on disk. So what I can do is say go work. And remember, there's a use command here. So I can say use that thing. And now I'm giving it the relative directory for thing. Why is it the relative directory? Because thing is right here in this directory along with my that go file. If I had a module, let's say in the parent directory up above here, I can say that dot forward slash and then give the name for that module if it was in the parent of this directory that I'm in. Let's clear our screen. Now, when I say go run, look at that, it works. But I don't have to type this whole big mess. I can literally just say go run dot thing that command. And notice how it works because um, that thing refers to this whole path here, the module. And remember the, the module is at version two. So when I say that thing and then command, I'm really talking about this, right? How do I know? Well, once again, if we do cat that thing that go mod, well, sure, in that thing, there's a module and this is the path for that module, the module path. So surely if I say that thing, when I add it to my go, my workspace, it should represent all of that. Okay. That kind of makes sense. All right. Let's do the other one. So I can say go work use that baz. And now, oh, we didn't go back and take a look at our um, editor to see what's happening there. So I should actually show you. And there we go. It added the second thing. Before, I didn't show you it was use thing. When I add the second one, it combined them into, you know, instead of saying use baz, use thing, you know, you've seen this with your import statement. It could be in the, on individual lines, but the go tool usually cleans it up by doing this, combining them. But once again, I can say go run dash baz dash services service one command. And if I do that, it works. Or since we know that cat that baz go module is this whole bit here and also say go run sc that me forward slash barrel slash awesome slash baz slash services slash command i can also do that and that works also so you see this is the ability you get if you want to work with multiple modules now i have to say that while this is cool and so on honestly i do not use go module please leave a comment and let me know if this is something you think you're going to use. If you've been stuck with having multiple modules before, or you had multiple modules in a directory and then you're like, oh, I just hate that I have to keep going into each directory to work with it. I wish I could work with from some higher parent directory. Just let me know if you've run into issues before and this is possibly going to solve things for you. All right. So once again, I'll ask you for your support. I spent a lot of time on these videos. Um, this video, this is the third time I'm recording it. I recorded it once, then um, I thought it was too long. I tried to record it a second time. It ended up recording without any video, only the audio. Was, <laughs> I had to record it again. So hopefully you show me some love by subscribing to the channel if you're not a subscriber, um, hitting the notification bell, and just even thumb, giving a thumbs up on the video to say thanks for all the hard work. I would appreciate it. Of course, if there's something that you didn't like or you think I can do better, please, I love the feedback also. And so with that said, thank you so much for your time and see you in the next video. Bye.